This lesson is about electricity and magnetism, which is one of the major branches of physics. We're only going to spend a little bit of time of it just to give you a brief introduction. It turns out that electricity and magnetism are intimately connected with each other. We're going to start out examining stationary electric charges, otherwise known as static electricity, how those interact with each other. Primarily, it's a force law that we're interested in. And we can talk about the idea of an electric potential as well. Then we look into moving charges in two ways. First, moving charges as flowing charges that create an electric current, which can then be used in a circuit to drive electronic devices and machines, which is a major part of our current technology. Then we'll move into magnetism, which is another effect of electric current. Magnetism is an electric phenomenon. And then we'll conclude bringing everything full circle, where magnetism interacts with electricity by what we call electromagnetic induction. This cartoon refers to something you've probably tried before. If you rub a balloon on something that's wool, you can then get it to stick to the wall. If you haven't ever tried this and you can get yourself a balloon, definitely try this now. Get a balloon, blow it up, rub it against something wool, uh, trousers, a sweater, something like that. Or if you don't have anything like that and you have hair, you can rub it against your hair and then you'll see that you can stick it to the wall. We'll try to understand today how that works. So we'll start off with the idea of electric force and electric charge. It turns out that electricity comes from what we call electric charge. There are two types of charges, positive and negative. Negative really does seem to be mathematically the negative, the opposite of positive charge. It's the first time in physics that we've actually seen a real negative quantity is with electric charge. The rule for electric charge interactions is that opposite signs of charges attract. So positive charges attract negative charges. Negative charges attract positive charges. On the other hand, like charges repel each other. Negative charges repel negative charges. Positive charges repel positive charges. If you have access to the balloon and wool, you can rub them together. One of them gets a positive charge, one of them gets a negative charge. They'll attract each other. If you can rub two balloons on a piece of wool and then bring the balloons together, you'll see that they repel each other because they have the same charge. You'll also notice that the force gets weaker as the distance between the objects gets greater. That's not a big surprise. It turns out that it works exactly the same way as gravity. So what's going on? When you rub together two different materials, say the balloon and the fur, you can sometimes get a transfer of charged particles from one to the other. What these charged particles actually are is electrons. One of the objects will release electrons and the other one will pick it up. The one that the electrons go to becomes negatively charged because electrons have a negative charge. The ones that they go away from becomes positively charged because the electrons have left and losing a negative means gaining a positive. The reason is that all normal matter is composed of charged particles, positive and negative, and they ordinarily cancel. When you rub objects together, you'll have a transfer of a small amount of those charges, then you'll have a charge imbalance, and you can actually then observe this interaction between the charges. Here's the actual formula for the force of interaction between electric charges. It's known as Coulomb's law. It says that the force is equal to K, this is known as Coulomb's constant, times Q1 times Q2. Q1 and Q2 are the charges that are interacting, Either one can be positive or negative, and you would include the sign in the calculation, divided by d squared. d is the distance between the charges. This k here is Coulomb's constant. It's one of those fundamental constants in the universe, and it's in the units that it needs to be uh, to make this law true. Q1 and Q2 are charges, they're electric charges. Those are be in units of coulombs. Coulomb is the SI unit of electric charge. It turns out that the elementary charge, the charge of an electron or a proton, is about 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. You see that this units work out the way it has to. If you multiply it by coulombs, coulombs, that's coulomb squared, that'll cancel the coulomb squared in the denominator and then you divide by meters squared, that cancels the meter squared in the numerator, and you're left with newtons, which is a force. 
if this ratio has a negative value, that means one of the charges is positive and one is negative, then you'll have a negative. That'll be an attractive force. If they both have the same sign, then their product will be positive. That will mean a repulsive interaction, a repulsive force. And again, the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the objects. So then I have a question for you. As I mentioned in the previous, in the slide, as the slide at the beginning of this section suggested, if you rub a balloon and get a charge on it, it'll stick to a wall. The balloon will have a charge. The wall will not have a charge. The wall is neutral. It's got zero charge. According to this rule, if one of the objects has a zero charge, Q1 or Q2, then this whole product has to be zero because twice nothing is still nothing. So what's going on there? How can a non-zero charge attract something that has a zero charge? Let's look at that. And to do that, I'll imagine, imagine the charges that make up the wall or whatever are something big that we can think about. In fact, let's think of them as something like marbles in a bag. So we'll have a bag that's got equal numbers of positive and negative charges. And the charges can move around inside the bag, but they can't leave the bag. Then we're going to bring a large positive charge next to the bag. Well, what's going to happen to the charges inside the bag? Well, if you think about it, I think you can understand that the positive charges are going to be repelled by this large positive charge. They're going to move to the opposite side. The negative charges are going to be attracted. They're going to be moved to the close side. So then, is this bag of charges going to be attracted or repelled by this positive charge? This is kind of subtle, because you might think, well, there's no effect. The repulsion of the positive charges and the attraction of the negative charges are going to equal each other. They're going to completely cancel out. But that's not the way it turns out. And the reason is, the positive charges are pushed to a farther distance away. The negative charges are attracted to a closer distance. And remember that this electric force, attraction or repulsion, gets weaker with distance. It's inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the interacting objects. The negative charges which are attracted are closer than the positive charges which are repelled, so the attraction to the negative charges is going to have a greater strength than the repulsion to the farther away positive charges. The net result will be that the bag is attracted to the charge, or the wall is attracted to a charged balloon. The charges separate, the attracted charges are closer than the repelled charges, and overall the result is an attraction. So when you rub different materials together, a balloon rubbed against a piece of wool, a rabbit fur against a plastic rod, a glass rod against silk, what happens is that they exchange charged particles, and so in the, as a result of that, they will obtain opposite charges from each other. Because as charge moves from one to the other, that leaves the opposite of the charge behind uh, compared to the charge that traveled. Turns out you can do this with all sorts of things. Aluminum cans work really nicely, especially if you drain them. They're attracted very strongly to a charged balloon. You can try it with a stream of water. And it's all because the charges that make up the objects can polarize. They can move around just a little bit so that the attracted particles are a little closer to the perturbing charge than the repelled particles, and the net interaction is an attraction. This tells us something very interesting about matter in general, and that's that neutral objects are neutral. They're not uncharged. They're made up of canceling amounts of negative and positive charges, which add up to zero, but the charge is still there. And when you bring an electric charge up against a neutral object, it reveals the electrical nature of the neutral object. If the neutral objects were truly uncharged, then there would be no interaction at all.